Representative John Rogers has been doubling down on the things that he said the other day. You may remember the original clip that we played on the air where this guy was saying, well, these children that are being aborted, they're just unwanted. And if we, we need to either kill them now or kill them in the electric chair, so we might as well kill them now. I mean, just horrific comic book villain levels of evil. It just, uh, it makes your skin crawl listening to it. But this is a guy that has been in the House of Representatives for, I think, what, 36 years? I mean, he's he's been in the House longer than I've been alive. And he's not backing down. He had the opportunity to back down or walk it back or explain himself with an interview with Yellowhammer and didn't. Didn't apologize, said that he stood by what he said. I mean, just cringeworthy. And then he was doing an interview the other day with... NBC 13, which was a local news station. And uh, let's see if I've still got it here. No, that's the original clip. Uh, and, and then this was the result of that interview. Earlier today, Donald Trump Jr. condemned your comments. Do you have a response to the president's son? Hey, that's an honor. <laughs> Donald Trump Jr. did that. Thank God. Right on. That's if you know I'm right. Because I don't know that he'd been right on since he'd been here. May, uh, that proved the right to make a city about abortion. Him being born, that's proved the right to be. That's a very, very good defense I have for abortion right to him. Look, look at him and say, why don't you, you abort him when he was born? He would have made that stupid statement, right? So, so his parents made the decision for him. Uh, that's the decision he made for him. So that's the first proof I got that mother had the right to have abortion. I had. They made a decision to have him, didn't they? They could have aborted him. But they made a decision to keep him. Because so he's evidently... Uh, Retarded. Uh, crazy. Donald Trump son, I know he's something wrong with that boy. I look at him and tell him something wrong with him. He said, hey, that's, a, that's the best defense I got for abortion right there looking at him. Well, there you go, Alabama. Especially you, Birmingham. That's your representative in the state house. And here's the really the takeaway from this, because for those of you who had a hard time understanding him, I don't blame you. I've lived in Alabama my entire life, and the guy rambles incoherently to where you can barely understand what he's trying to say. Uh, the, the guy is a communicator. This guy is not. But anyway, there is Representative John Rogers trying to make a point about abortion. And in this interview, they were asking about Donald Trump Jr. responding to what he said the other day in the house and him saying that to give a summary, well, that's proof that what I'm saying about abortion is right because his mother should have aborted him because he's, and again, using his words, not mine, retarded and crazy. Now let's go ahead and unpack that here for a second. Can you imagine anything less tolerant than saying that somebody who disagrees with you politically ought to be dead? Because the left constantly teaches about, or, you know, pretends to hold the ideals of tolerance and civility. And anytime somebody says something that is critical of them, that's what they always, they always do. They kind of do uh, what you see in basketball a lot, which is even though the foul didn't necessarily hit them or there was no contact made, they kind of throw their hands up and act as though they've been fouled, and they say, no, 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 civility, no, 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 tolerance. But then this is a Democrat saying, and, and there are others that hold the sentiment, this is a Democrat saying, well, Donald Trump Jr. really should have been aborted. He shouldn't be alive anymore because he disagrees with what I'm saying. I can't think of anything less tolerant than wanting your political adversaries to be dead so they're not alive to say things you don't like. I, there's literally not a way to be less tolerant. Not one that I can think of. But the larger point here, because think about what he is saying, that because somebody is, and again, I'm using his words, so don't demonetize me on YouTube or anything for saying this, which, by the way, should be an indication of, of that he shouldn't have said it. But he said that the reason that you should abort someone is because there's something wrong with that boy, that he's retarded or crazy. 
using his phraseology, not mine. This goes back to the eugenics roots of abortion. And if you're looking at the arguments that were pro-abortion early on, especially when you're looking at the writings of Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, and the other eugenicists that were living around that time when abortion was just starting to come to fruition, that's how they saw it. They saw birth control, you know, the, the pill and everything else, and on top of that, also abortion, based on which thinker that you're reading about there. They saw both of those as a way to create a master race. Remember that a lot of Hitler's influence in creating a race of thoroughbreds came from people like Margaret Sanger. In fact, the race of thoroughbreds line that I just used came from her. That's a reference to her. And so this idea that we were going to root out the human weeds, again, Margaret Sanger's words, not mine, the way that we were going to do that by getting rid of the Jews and blacks. And again, I'm, I'm trying, I know I'm saying this and I sound like a broken record. These are all Margaret Sanger's ideas, not mine. I'm just quoting her. The way that we were going to get rid of those human weeds, as she called them, was through birth control. And one of the classes of undesirables that she talked about ad nauseum was people that were not mentally competent, that weren't, you know, that had special needs or whatever it was. And that's something that carried over into this science of trying to craft a, a perfect race, a perfect utopia that is populated only with certain people, is that there was forcible sterilization, again, something that Margaret Sanger was a big fan of, forcible sterilization of certain parts of the population to help weed them out. That was the original plan behind Planned Parenthood. That was the original goal. And they really haven't abandoned it. There's a reason that abortions affect black people far more than white people. Even though they only represent about 15 is generous, it's more like 13 or 14 percent of the population, that black people account for uh, roughly 35 to 40 percent of all abortions. It disproportionately affects especially poor people and especially minorities. And so Planned Parenthood is essentially doing the bidding of their founder, Margaret Sanger, long after she's been gone. They've also pretty much wiped out Down syndrome in Iceland. Not because they found a cure for Down syndrome, because they're able to test early on whether or not a child is going to have syndro uh, Down syndrome, and they're just killing all the children in the womb before they are born so that they don't have to deal with a child with Down syndrome. Which is so evil on a number of levels. If you've ever actually had a relationship with somebody that is special needs, and, and Down syndrome, of course, being a part of that, it, it's impossible in my mind, and maybe there are exceptions, but it's impossible in my mind to know somebody like that and to spend a certain amount of time with them and then not see their value as a human being. And that's essentially the idea that encircles the eugenicist roots of abortion. That there are certain people that are not fit to live, and because of that we have to go ahead and weed them out. But that assumes that that person is not as valuable as people that have more mental capabilities than them. But you cannot quantify human life's value that way. It can't be done. And when looking back and, and looking at the looking at, at some of the relationships that I've had with people that are special needs, they are some of the kindest, sweetest people that would never hurt a fly. And I mean, just looking back at that and, and people that are saying that you shouldn't be allowed to live because you're not mentally capable as I am. Well, if that's the case, then what would be wrong with somebody that has an IQ of 140 or 150 someday saying, you know what, you people that only have an IQ of about 120, 117, 115, yeah, we can't allow you to live. You're just not up to my level. You cannot quantify the value of a person's life like that. And to treat certain people as less valuable and to treat them as subhuman and people that you ought to be able to just eliminate 
because they're not as mentally capable as you. Although in Roger's case, I'm guessing there's not too many people that rank below him on the mental capacity scale. Uh, in Roger's case, you, you would think somebody that was a black person, especially, would have a little more sympathy for that. For this idea that there are certain people that just aren't as valuable as others, and we ought to be able to do what we want to with them, because we're superior. That is the height of cruelty and evil. And I said John Roberts, that's the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, John Rogers, sorry. It's very telling that there are now some on the left that are decrying him. And here's why. It's the same thing that we saw with Governor Northam and a whole bunch of people on the left getting really angry that he had donned blackface when he was in college. It's the same thing, and I'll tell you why. Because this is a man who just advocated for literal infanticide, not even abortion. We're saying after the baby has already been born, then the doctor and the mother are going to have a conversation about whether or not they're going to kill the child or not. And again, I've played that clip on here. You can go look it up. You can go look up that interview. It's everywhere. Don't take my word for it. That's what he said. That's what he said should happen is that that conversation about whether or not we should let the baby live or kill it should take place. And so I think it's very telling that the left didn't care about that. That's fine. But all of a sudden, when we find out that he wore blackface in college, oh, well, now we're upset. You're talking about slaughtering children that have already been born. And you're really upset because the guy wore insensitive face makeup. I'm not trying to belittle that or say that that's no big deal. I'm just saying that when you're comparing the two, one involves life and death for potentially millions of people. The other is an offensive picture that he took. Now, we're both wrong, sure, but there is a argument of degrees here. And that's exactly what happened the other day with John Rogers. There were some people very upset with him for making this statement. Not bec uh, and I'm talking about people on the left. Not because the other day he said that, well, you have to kill babies now or kill them in the electric chair later, whichever, so you might as well go ahead and kill them now. Weren't upset with him over that. When he was talking in that interview about the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., regardless of what you think about the president or his son, I think that we're a little bit better than suggesting that anybody that disagrees with me or is on the opposite side of the political spectrum of me ought to be executed. Regardless of how you feel about that, you would think that there would be some people on the left that say, look, I don't like Donald Trump Jr., but I don't want the guy to have been aborted just because I don't like him. No, they didn't do that. The only reason that a lot of the people on the left came and said, nope, that's a bridge too far, is because he used the word retarded. But if we're comparing the two, and we're talking about an argument of degrees here, using the word retarded is pretty benign compared to the way that he used the word retarded, specifically to degrade and belittle someone that he did not like, and also using that as an excuse for saying, and he ought to be killed because of that. Because, of course, the implication there is if it's okay to kill someone because you feel that they're going to be retarded, and that is, as John Rogers said, his strongest case, his strongest defense for having abortion legal and, and part of the institution here. Well, then what he's saying is that people that are mentally challenged ought to be killed. I don't think you can get more offensive than that. And as far as being somebody that tries to in his daily life, especially stick up for those that are innocent or those that cannot defend themselves. There are very few people that are more innocent and would be have a more difficult time defending themselves than those that are mentally challenged and have special needs. And there is no one more innocent or has more trouble defending themselves than children living inside the womb. But... Really looking at, at Rogers and the reaction that the left had and that they only really had a problem with him using the word retarded really does say something about them and their priorities. But the bottom line here is, 
that the Democrats engage in the height of cruelty, the elimination of innocent life. And they do this and feel justified in it because it's a sanitized cruelty. And this is really a big indication of that, that don't you dare say something politically incorrect or call someone retarded, but if you do want to kill them for being mentally challenged, that's perfectly acceptable. It makes no sense. But as long as it makes them feel good and it does not offend their sensibilities, they're perfectly okay with it. No matter what the result is, they would rather children be murdered in the womb than somebody say, oh, that person is retarded because they feel it might offend someone. Offense to them has become a bigger deal than the literal life and death. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.